Okay, you want to knock a little of the material off on your bucket grid. Again, we could be using a small roller pan, a bucket grid, or whatever. I've laid some cardboard down here on the benches because I really don't want to get a lot of material on them until we're ready to finish them, even though the one time is very forgiving on lap marks. Until it cures and is coated over again, you won't get a lap mark, but I just I like to do it in sections, keep it very controlled. And this six inch jumbo coater here is nice because I can just pick up a different area of the roller where I still have material. So I can probably do, actually I can do two at once with this six inch. You see I've got some masking paper down on the floor. Now that's just simply again, a little extra protection so I don't have to be careful. I can just bump that floor. I don't have to see back there. I'm gonna load up a little more material. And we'll get all this side done, come around and do the sides and the face, and we'll move on. Spindles are always a tedious and intimidating part of the project, but if you use a roller like this, these will go pretty quick. Hit that, didn't I? I'm going to finish these out at the very top underneath this rail. Okay. Let's set this on a nice level area. And you want to be pretty systematic about the spindles. For example, to not have to change my position, I've got some plants here. I'm just get to get in a good position. I'm going to do all the right sides of these from left to right. Now again, we talked about using a 3 8 roller to apply the material, so I am going to brush this in a little bit at the top and bottom where we don't get it with the roller. Some of these plants are a little close. We've got the others on the other side tied back. You might want a little piece of cardboard. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to do that. And I'll just use this cardboard to lay back against the plants here. We can have a clear area to work now. So again, doing all the right side. A little more material. Again, with any oil-based stain, you would be worried about touching, you know, the other areas adjoining. We're going to get right back on those anyway, but the one time is so forgiving. And we'll even use this end of the roller. Let's really flood these saw cuts here at the top. This is a particular problem area on most decks because it's just an open saw cut. So we'll probably hit these a couple of times while we're in this section. Let that soak in a little bit. Again, okay, so I've done all the right sides now, and I'm going to go around to this side and I'll do the left sides real quick. Again, this is going to be a whole section of spindles done pretty quickly. And again, if, if I didn't have the plants here and I had a little more room, if the bench wasn't there on the deck, We'd probably just use this little short-handled roller. But you could use a pad applicator on your spindles, as we discuss, and we might grab one here and just to look at it and see how it does. But this is usually the best way, just the either the six inch or the four and a half inch jumbo coater. It's our always our product of choice. And we'll just finish these spindles out. This 3 8 is almost too thick for these spindles. So you got to really have light pressure here. I might even want my smaller roller out here. It's a little tight. I think I'm going to go get that. And you can kind of adapt as you go. You know, if something isn't working, try something different, as they say. But again, all we're trying to do here is just get the one time on the wood. We'll go back with our brush, 
I'm gonna knock a little of that off of there. This just gets us right in here and then I'll just do the face of these. And boy, this is a beautiful color. Really taking, making something out of this treated lumber. Again, I'm not rolling real fast. I don't want to spatter this. And another point is, you know, while the one time is, once it's cured in the wood, it's non-toxic, it's safe for animals, uh, but it, you don't want to get it on your skin out in the sun while you're applying. So if you do get it on, you just wash with Dawn dish soap within a little bit of time. Just don't leave it on for a half an hour or anything. Okay. Now I'll lay my roller down. I actually should already have my brush over here, but get my brush, we're just getting started here, so. As I said, we've got some areas on the corners and areas where we'll have to go with the brush now. And we've got the tops and bottoms, so I can either start at the top or bottom. I'm gonna start here, and this probably because this is such a tight area, we're just gonna go ahead and brush this in. And I've got some metal fasteners here. I'm gonna have a rag where I can just wipe it off of that surface. It's not gonna hurt them as long as I brush it off real quick. Like I say, this stuff is really thick, so uh, you just want to work it into every crack and crevice anywhere you can see raw wood and it'll soak in on its own. So we're sort of just delivering the material now. We'll go back and smooth it out in a minute. Another thing, when I put my brush in, you'll notice I'm just tapping the pail like this. I'm not taking it off at the side where I take a lot of material off. We want to leave that material on the brush, get it on the wood, and then spread it out. Just make quick business of this. Obviously a helper would be good. You could have one person applying with the roller, another person applying with the brush, and make really quick business out of this. And again, I'm hitting these tops again as I'm up here, going over these again. Now we're acting like we're in a hurry a little bit here. Uh, we're just trying to show a lot of these techniques. But you just want to do it in sections. We're going to look at this whole rail and spindle system between the posts. I'll look at my spindles as I'm applying to these other areas, look for any long runs or excess material. The one time just needs to be wet on the wood. You don't need to try to apply it thick. Just, I'm just dragging that brush down. Again, this Roller puts it on pretty even. You don't necessarily have to back brush, but I just want to make a nice looking project here for this homeowner. And you can use a natural bristle brush. You can use a nylon brush. It's not real particular because you don't get brush marks. You're just really delivering it to the wood. I've got a little Wooster Yachtsman here. This is a little inexpensive brush. I'm probably not gonna clean it up. If you did need to clean up a brush, you'll use mineral spirits or concentrated simple green. Clean your tools and equipment. If you're doing your project over a couple of days, a great thing about one time is it doesn't cure unless it's in the sunlight. So. You can put all your tools, rollers, everything you got, put them into a small black trash bag and the one time will stay wet for the next day. So you don't clean your brushes until you're completely done with the project. I'm gonna go ahead and do this bottom edge. We've got a little material on there. And again, we could come back and this would blend in nicely, but because it's a dark color like this, we wanna just go ahead and do these as we're in a section. And again, I'm gonna roll everything I can with the small pelican roller, or the jumbo coater, pelican pail. Again, anybody can apply this stuff.
again, no real method or madness to this or rhyme or reason. I'm gonna hit the bottom of my spindles here. And you notice again, I've been using this tip of the roller, so there's not much material here, but I got a lot back here, so I'll use that part of the roller just to apply to these bottom saw cuts on the bottom of these spindles. And again, I'm doing almost this whole section from two or three positions. You wanna do as much as you can before you move your feet. And again, we've got a couple little areas behind the spindle. This is, again, every construction and design is gonna be different, so we can't really show a whole lot of specifics without allowing for some modification. You may wanna do all this with a brush. You may wanna use a pad applicator. Just depends on your particular construction. And then again, just a little section behind each of these spindles. I'm gonna again, hit it all from the one side where I can see. I can see this angle, so I hit it from there. And then I'll come back the other area, other direction. See how much we've done with the roller. Very little brushing here. And then this one last angle behind these spindles. And one final look at everything. I'm just gonna again hit each of these spindles one time maybe. For any drips or runs up around the top. You don't wanna keep applying. We can actually see where it's soaking in some areas here, but it's also the sun's out. So this is gonna start soaking in and curing pretty quick. You don't want to go back and keep reapplying. Once you've got color on the wood, it's nice and glistening, then just let it dry in and soak in. Boy, it's getting warm here. <laughs>